Hello and welcome back to my channel. I am Christy Van with Fantastic Finances and on this channel I usually teach Velocity Banking but today I have my good friend Alex Albaran on with us again today. We're going to be talking about mindsets and just what you can do to kind of lift your spirits a little bit about what's going on in the world and how we can you know, kind of reanalyze what we're doing in our lives that's maybe affecting our finances and we're not even aware of that. So Alex, I am so glad that you're with us today. You just tickle me to death. He's like my favorite person in the whole wide world. <laughs> I've never heard that before. Tickle me to death. I'm going to start using that. I like that. <laughs> you have to come to Tennessee if you're going to use those phrases, okay? <laughs> oh, yeah, down here in Miami, who knows? Yeah. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. So, But I am very, very um, tickled with you and the work that you do. I share you with everyone that's interested in any kind of business uh, starting or promoting their business. Mm -hmm. uh, you are just, you have just proven to be excellent. Um, your excellent character, you, uh, your work is excellent. You just tickle me to death. And it's like, I have the best time when I'm with you, when I'm talking to you, because you uplift me, um, you encourage me and you show me how much further we can go than what we're doing right now, which is absolutely amazing mm -hmm. to the point that I feel like that you have had a real hand in bringing me to where I am today. And I do, I want to share you because I think that you are, something that the people need. Everybody needs encouragement to know that they can do better. And mm -hmm. it's exciting to know that you can be better at what you're doing, whatever that is. Um, I'm going to give a quick example. This morning, I had a conversation with a lady and she is in Alabama. And she was telling me that since she had been watching the channel, how encouraged she was. She said that it had literally lit a fire underneath her and that she is looking for better work at this time, that she is looking for other opportunities to increase in her life. And, you know, that it had just been a blessing to her. And I hadn't uh, thought of that, really. So I hope that the this channel encourages as much as it gives you steps to take to help your finances, however you need to go about doing that. But it is just encouraging to know that we are uplifting the American people, even the world with the things that come on this channel. So Alex is a big part of that. I wanted to bring him on again today just to share what he does for me and what he can do for anyone that needs a little push in their business or e-commerce store or whatever you're interested in mm. doing. Thank you, Alex, for joining us today. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Absolutely. Well, thank you for the introduction. You're my best hype woman I can ever ask for. Um, so yeah, thank you for that. Thank you for having me on the channel. And I've worked with many of your clients, people that you refer to me, and they're exceptional. I mean, I love working with them. They have great mindsets. And I think, you know, your job is to bring people to, I would say, financial security. But then once they're financially secure, they want to look at financial freedom, which is different. I talked to so many people who've been working for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. I mean, hard, six days a week, eight to 10 hours a day. And they have a 401k, but they're like, ah, oh, I mean, based on inflation, based on what I spend, I'm just going to be retiring just to get by and survive. And that is not what God wants for us. I mean, I, I know a lot of people think money is evil, right? Money is the root of all evil. It's not. The love of money is the root of all evil. The love of anything good can become evil. Um, but God also wants us to make enough money so we can generously give to people around us and to missions that we want to focus on. And so I think, again, it's a mindset shift of, okay, I can't just save until I'm Warren Buffett, or I can't save until I'm you know, a billionaire or even a millionaire. I have to create different streams of income that don't require my time to make money. And so I love helping people do that. Mm -hmm. You're very good at what you do. And when I think about my own life, and here I am, I'm not ashamed to say it, I live to be 52. I'm thankful that I'm alive because I've had a lot of life happen. And so when you look at your life and you're thinking, what am I going to be when I'm 52? You don't think um, I'm going to be doing YouTube. <laughs> you just don't think like that because the mindset I had was small. It was like mm -hmm. W2 job. Let's work that until, you know, we die, literally. Mm. So when you work with people who are encouragers like you are, it just helps you to come up, um, you know, out of that mindset of poverty, literally. Mm -hmm. 
uh, I speak to people every day and they have a mindset of poverty. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important that what you do not only helps people to take their dreams and create them into reality, but you literally help people to look up. And that's beautiful because you don't mm -hmm. get that out of a lot of people. Thank you. And you mentioned dreams. I mean, I dream every day. My eyes are wide open. A lot of people talk about dreams and they're like, oh, I, I wish I could have this business or I wish I could be making this. And again, they think of it as an unattainable thing. I mean, if you go to Costco on the weekend, there is a probably 90 minute line to get gas to probably save maybe 10 cents a gallon. And again, I'm not trying to say anything bad about them, but it's again, it's a mindset shift where what if they spent 90 minutes watching your YouTube videos or working with me or, I mean, there's free information, right? Books, YouTube videos, podcasts. It's about how can I grow my horizon? How can I expand? Not, not how can I constrict and how can I just be secure? I mean, if you want security, you can go to a prison. You can get max security, right? <laughs> <laughs> Which sounds crazy, but um, it's absolutely true. You want freedom, you want growth, and it takes a different mindset, but also not just mindset. I mean, we could talk about mindset for 10 years and make no money, um, but we also need to take action. And that's where I ask people all the time, how much money do you make and what's your biggest expense? And so when you worked your job, Christy, how much money did you make and what was your biggest expense? So my biggest expense had to have been my mortgage probably at that time. Mm -hmm. And how much was that? Right around 1200 a month. Okay, so 1200 a month. And then how much did you make in income? Well, at the time I'm speaking of, mm -hmm. probably 3000 a month max. Okay. So I'd reckon that actually your biggest, let's say, expense was not knowing how to make a million dollars. Yeah. So let's just let that sit in for you in the audience. Your biggest debt, your biggest tax, your biggest expense is not having not just a business, but even the knowledge, even if you work a job on how to maximize your income, right? Because a million dollars, we think, oh, I mean, a millionaire. If I work for 50 years, I could become a millionaire. But there's everyday people making even 500,000 a year, right? 600,000, 250,000. So if you started making even 200,000 a year, your, your $1,200 a month mortgage would seem like a drop in the bucket, right? But at the time you were probably doing things like maybe you're everybody watching, maybe couponing and like going across town to get gas. That's 10 cents cheaper and going to Costco and waiting in line for three hours to get toilet paper for five cents cheaper, you know, per package and things like that, where we think we're making progress. And of course, if you're struggling, you have to do what you have to do. But I know many people that watch you, they're not financially desperate. They're financially secure but they're still acting like they're financially desperate and they're going to stay in that same place. They're not going to keep growing. And so again, the biggest debt or tax or expense that you and I have is not having knowledge to take our business or even just our skills to the next level. And so it doesn't have to be a million dollars. It could be going from a hundred thousand a year to 200 or you make a hundred thousand a year. Now you make a hundred thousand a year in your own business and then you can scale from there. And so again, I think it's just a lack of either knowledge or a focus on growth that stops so many people from achieving, again, freedom, not security. Financial security is not the goal for most people watching, right? It's financial freedom. And I think the point is, is that we're in a mindset just like with finances and how we use banks, that this is just the way it is. I mean, mm -hmm. this is just the way it is. And, you know, there are the millionaires, there are people that, you know, are wealthy, uh, are they really, you know, because I look at, I, I deal with a lot of people every day and, you know, some make 2000 a month and some make 25,000 a month. Mm -hmm. So you would think, oh, why are the 25,000 a month coming to me? But they are in a mindset still of lack. Mm -hmm. I lack. So I have to figure this out. Uh, it could just be, they need to tweak their finances a little bit, mm -hmm. but it's like, they're always thinking I need to make more money. And the lack is what I think keeps us down is because we're, we're not meant to live in lack. We're meant to live in abundance. Mm -hmm. So when you have, it doesn't matter if you have 2000 a month or if you have 25,000 a month, you still should be dreaming about where it is that you want to go. What are you going to do with your life? And it's mm -hmm. just like I say in my videos a lot of uh, the God that created us is a creator and we are made in his image. 
So in my mind, that means we're creators. That means that we can set a vision for our life and we can reach that vision. Uh, I am so big on taking visions and putting them in front of you, whether that means how much more money you want to make in a year, your house you want, how, how much bigger of a house do you want? Mm. Where do you want it sitting? How much do you want to give? That's my big one. If you are a giver, you're going to receive and you have to make money to give. And mm. the more you give, the more you receive, the more you give, the more you receive. I mean, that's just a spiritual law. So when we look at our checkbooks, that will tell us who our God mm. is mm. by where is your money going? So I think that that's a big, you know, step back moment for people because they're like, what does my checkbook say I'm doing, you know, mm -hmm. and who is my God with that? That answers all your questions when you look at your money. So when I look at increase, though, I am always looking for an opportunity every day. And I pray with my daughter every morning as we drive to school. And in the prayer, I pray that she and I both look for the opportunities that he's laid before us in that day. And it may be something that you just kind of skim over and no big deal. But I think we need to become aware of the opportunities when they're in front of us. Mm -hmm. Like if people see this video, for example, and they see Alex and they think, well, I always wanted to do this or I always thought about that. But you don't pick up the phone or you don't make that call or send the email, then you're never going to know. You kind of have to take steps of faith into mm -hmm. what it is you want to move into. Absolutely. Every client of mine takes a leap of faith with me, with even if they don't work with me, even if they start a business, it's a leap of faith. But people want... They want their cake and they want, they have their cake and they want to eat it too. However that saying goes where they want to, you know, have a successful business, but they don't want to take action. They don't want to pull the trigger, right? They want something that's guaranteed or right? anything guaranteed in life besides death and taxes is a little bit shaky, right? And so I think the guarantee is that if you take action, if you take a leap of faith, um, you're going to get an experience, right? Something good is going to come of it, whether it's knowledge, money, results, whatever it may be. I think it's just about shifting the mindset from in action, that's the biggest risk. I think people think doing something, taking action is a big risk because it's outside their comfort zone and they just feel anxious. They feel nervous. And when they feel uncomfortable, they get in that shell and then they just say, oh, I'll, maybe six months from now, or maybe there's a better time to do it. There's never a better time than today uh, to change your life. The best time was yesterday. Uh, the next best time is today. And so I think it's just a mindset shift to where, again, in action, in anything, money, family, relationship, health, diet, whatever it may be, in action can't help you. It can't. Mm -hmm. In my own story, when I started this YouTube channel about nine, ten months ago, I was working a full-time position that was extremely stressful. Um, so... I remember thinking there's no way that I have time to teach finances on top of this job because it was very stressful and it was, you know, the same schedule everybody keeps. You've got an eight to five approximately. And it's like, where's the time? But when I would come home, I would talk about and think about and look at and dig into what should I be doing to get the word out of Velocity Banking because it's so important that whether you use it or not, you have an opportunity to hear about Velocity Banking mm -hmm. and how it can change your financial future. So leaving the job seemed impossible because I was like, these people need me. Uh, I was the only one running several areas that I worked in. So leaving them felt desperate. You know, it was like, I can't do that. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I just kept praying about it. I had it on my vision board of what I wanted to do. I wanted to teach finances to people that need help. Mm -hmm. Well, out of the blue, an opportunity came to where someone came in uh, immediately. Like we're talking within a week of me saying, OK, I'm going to leave the job and I'm going to go in to teach in finances full time. That was such a risk because I was mm -hmm. leaving behind six figures right there, just walking away into absolutely nothing. Absolute uncertainty. I, yeah. And mm -hmm. it was just like, but the drive to help the people get the message was there. Mm -hmm. Yes, I started doing videos before I quit the job. I would come home, work of an evening, go back, hit it again, be stressed out to death, come in, try to do videos again. So it was a gradual process, but we're talking a nine or 10th month period. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to give God all the glory because I feel like when we do our tithing, we do our giving, we put it in his court to take it. Basically, this is what I want to do. Help me to get there. I believe that he'll help each and every one of us mm -hmm. to get to that next level. What is it that you want to do with your life? 
you have to make that decision. And just like with myself, you have to sometimes end up gradually stepping away from the security mm -hmm. that you're talking about. Uh, having the security, that just wasn't enough for me for some reason. It wasn't about the money. When I talked to you the first time, I told you I would just like to make what I'm making right now. Mm -hmm. When I left the position, I was not making even half of what I was making at my job. So I was like, okay, I'm going to make this work right. because here I am, <laughs> right? So uh, I think that, you know, when you put the God factor into your plans, that he mm -hmm. will guide your steps into what goal it is you want. But, you know, your giving, uh, your tithing, uh, your effort, I believe all of that's blessed. And then when you change your mind and you realize, hey, you know, I'm no different from the millionaire. He mm -hmm. just took some steps that maybe I haven't. That can really make a difference. That can really make a difference in your whole life, not just your financial life. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And I think so many people watching this, you and I included in this video, we want to be very generous, very selfless. Um, but money is power and not just the power to buy a mansion or buy a boat or go on this vacation. More importantly, it's a power to make an impact. Um, but it's hard to focus on making an impact on others when you're just getting by, um, you're surviving, you're not thriving. And I think it's a mindset shift to where, okay, if I can make more money, I have more money, I have more power to help other people, um, whether it's with faith or a certain mission or even the people around you. Um, again, that's what God wants for us. He does not want us to just get by and be broke and be okay doing that. Because again, we have a much higher potential, not just for ourselves, but to help maybe not the world but at least our family and the people around us making their lives better, um, getting kids education, getting them in sports, getting other family members on track. Um, but again, if you don't have money, you don't have power to make an impact. And that's a big factor. And you can always take a college degree. You know, mm -hmm. I hear people, well, I'm going to go back to school. I didn't, I didn't graduate from college. I attended about a year and a half and I thought this is not for me. It literally was not for me. Mm. My children, they went all the way through. They graduated. They have their degrees. Uh, I will say they did that on scholarships. They don't have any student loans. So I'm very tickled with them for that. But that just wasn't me. For some reason, the certificates, gaining skills. I mean, you don't have to dedicate years and years of your life to a college room or a mm. university. Uh, literally just feel what it is that you want to do. What is that feeling on the inside, the dream of, man, I would love to teach people this, or I would love to help people get to this level or to do this. Anytime we're helping people, we're doing what we were put down here to do. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that, that is the push that God gives us from the back. Mm -hmm. You and I were just together in Miami and in, our, in my country club, all those members that we saw, very few of them have their masters in anything. Most wow. have a bachelor's or less because they're entrepreneurs, right? They found a niche and they crushed it. I know a lot of them that own franchises as well. Um, that own McDonald's, Burger Kings, Dunkin' Donuts. And so they don't even eat McDonald's, but they own a lot of McDonald's. And so it's just about, again, finding your niche, crushing it and not thinking about, again, I would say overanalyzing analysis paralysis because that's the antithesis of making money, uh, overthinking, overanalyzing, over planning. I talked to people who've had a business idea, Christy, for 20 years, two zero. 20 years ago, I was five years old, right? And so think of when I was five years old until now, they've still been thinking and planning it and waiting for the perfect time. It's not a possibility. There's no perfect time. Again, it was yesterday. You wish you would have started that business 20 years ago, um, but you have to just start whether it's working with me or starting on your own. And then in a year from now, talking to me or talking to somebody else, um, it's not that you have to pay for coaching, but of course, I mean, working with you and I, coaching helped accelerate your track probably by a factor of 10 years, if not more. Um, there's opportunity costs, like you can get a mentor, but again, it's all about understanding that the perfect time is going to be never, there's always family issues, personal issues. You know, maybe you're super busy with your job, but Christy, she had not a dream. She had a goal. There's a vast difference. A dream is, again, something that most people never achieve because they think like, oh, I'll meet him one day or I'll have that car one day or I'll do this one day. And they act like it's like such a far off thing that they don't even have a game plan on how they're going to get there. You set a goal and you're like, I'm going to do this. It's going to be successful. I don't care how long it takes. You start making videos every day, even with your job and you got the result that you wanted. So again, I think it's a vast difference between 
having a dream, a far off dream versus having, let's say a destination. And once you have a destination, you can build a GPS to say, how exactly am I going to get there? And usually a coach can build that for you and say, okay, I've gone to that destination and beyond so I can help coach you and show you the directions on how to get there. What is the mindset that people get into that they just can't take that step out? I mean, what do you think it is that stops people? I believe number one, it's the fear of failure Yeah. and the fear of the uncertainty and of the unknown. Yeah. Again, it's all fear-based. Um, they just don't know what's out there. They don't know again, okay, I want to go here, but I don't know exactly how I'm going to get there because again, they have a job. They like certainty. One plus one equals two. Exactly. They like their set. Okay, here's my job. Here's my responsibilities. I get my paycheck every Wednesday or every two weeks or every month. And that's it. Um, they like that because it's comfortable. It's safe. Again, they're seeking safety, seeking comfort. But my biggest clients, my most successful clients, they understand that you have to take risks. You have to get outside of your comfort zone and face your fear of failure. But again, going back to my earlier point, the real failure is never trying. If you just, if you let the inaction control you and you never even try, you're going to look back 30, 40, 10 years from now, whenever, and regret it. You'll never regret giving it your best shot. I mean, even if this didn't work out for you, the YouTube thing, you'd have said, okay, I can always go back to the job. The job's there. I give it my best shot for whatever, five years. I made a video every day. Um, but I think for you, again, you set a goal and you made it happen because it was a goal, not a dream. But again, for people watching, you have to understand that fear of failure is understandable and you're never going to get over that, but you have to keep pushing forward. You have to at least try for an extended period of time, right? It's like going to the gym. You can't go to the gym for a month and not have a six pack and then be mad. <laughs> and that sounds simple, but again, people, they're like, I'm going to become a YouTuber like Christy or like, I'm going to start an e-commerce store on my own. I'm going to figure it out. And then after a month or two, they spend five hours a week on it. They wonder why they're not an expert um, and they get mad about it. And they're like, you know what? There's too much competition out there or YouTube saturated. That's the excuse I hear a lot. And it's like, no, you just didn't do it for long enough. You did the boring thing, making a video every day over and over and over again. You improved, you listened to your viewers, you implemented feedback and you got better and better over time. And so even with people working with me on the e-commerce store, my most successful clients are the most patient, right? They don't need results next month or the month after. It's a long-term horizon. And once you have that as well, that helps a lot. I think people overestimate what they can do right now. Like what's my money next month or the month after? If you looked at it like that, you'd have quit, right? But you looked at it from a long-term perspective and that's why um, most people fail at entrepreneurship simply because it goes back to the mindset. They have the wrong approach with it. Um, and they let the fear of failure control them into thinking, okay, if it doesn't work right away, that means I should just quit. Um, but the best entrepreneurs, they keep pushing, they keep going, make improvements. And then over time, um, they see the results. So when I think about dreaming, uh, you'll, you'll hear about people that do quit their job because, well, I'm going to chase this dream and they have children mm. or, you know, they have a family to take care of. I'm not talking about stepping away from your responsibilities and saying, I'm just throwing it to the wind. God mm. will bring it to me. If he wants me to have money, he'll bring it. That's not the mindset I'm talking about. That's not a right mindset at all. The mindset being that I'm going to work my job and then I'm going to go work on this when I get off of my job. Mm -hmm. Uh, you need to be dreaming, uh, uh, setting those goals based on what you have to do as a mother or a father. I mean, we still have to support our families. Uh, we don't just lay down and quit. But mm -hmm. you know what? I've never once been laying in bed or I haven't been laying on the couch eating chips, watching TV and <laughs> something come and poke me on the shoulder and say, hey, I'm opportunity. I'm here. That's not the way it happens. <laughs> so That's funny. <laughs> you have to get up. You have to show mm. up every day. And when you show up, even for your job, you're still thinking, what am I missing? What am I, what opportunities are right here in front of my face? Mm. Now, when I started the YouTube channel, literally started, I actually put the YouTube channel up, I think three months before I ever put up a video because mm -hmm. I really didn't intend on putting up a video, just to be honest with you. <laughs> I think that when I first heard about putting up the videos, I was like, this is not for me because hello, who wants, I literally said, yeah. uh, nobody wants to see a 52 year old Tennessee woman. <laughs> 
talking about finances. I'm oh. sorry. That still makes me laugh. No, and I told you, I'm like, no, they, that's exactly what they want to see. And look at that <laughs> award to your right. That's proof that they want to see it. Yeah. You did. And mm -hmm. so, you know, you encouraged me and I still wouldn't do it. And mm -hmm. my husband said to me one day, he is my backbone. Uh, he said to me, I will pay for Alex's services. I want you to do it. And when he said that that day, then you're like, oh, wow, now I have to do it because my husband's watching. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that is literally, you know, he paid for your services at that time, which you have excelled. I won't just scream that out loud. If Alex is working with you right now, if you are planning on working with Alex or you're even thinking about it, I have nothing negative to say about this guy. I mean, he literally has gone above and beyond anything that I hired him to do. So he's a beautiful spirit, a soul that is going to help you excel. If you are in, you're on board, you're wanting to jump, he will push you. So, <laughs> just saying. I like that. should be my new slogan. I like that. <laughs> can't go wrong with this guy. But that's what happened in my situation was my husband was like, I want you to do this. Mm. And, you know, he pushed me. So just having that support system that I probably never had in my life, mm. uh, then watching Alex just take control and encouraging, giving ideas. It's a constant uh, feeding of you can do this, you can do mm -hmm. this. So when the videos went on, it was, it was, atypical, I want to say, the way that it just, uh, everybody took a hold of it. Uh, they exactly got that message that I mm -hmm. was wanting to put out. You don't have to live broke. You don't have to live in a poor mindset. Uh, you don't have to live in a bad relationship. I have so much life uh, back there that I could literally um, tell anybody that's in any situation, uh, maritally or it's is maritally a word? <laughs> In any situation, re relationally, uh, to do with your job, to do with debt, I have been there and done that. It is possible to come up out of the mire of just nasty dirt. And it is a beautiful place when you realize you are in control of what your finances are doing. You're in control of what your life is doing. And you need to take control of that. Um, what is it that we don't want to take control? I mean, think about it. I, I hear people and they're like, well, you know, I would do that, but, and it's, there's always that, but rather than just step out and say, I'm going to do this. I'm mm -hmm. going to do this. I think that if everybody could just tweak their minds just a little bit mm -hmm. around finances, around the way they feel about money, the stress that's related to money is keeping you poor. I don't care who acts like that. That's not a real thing. It is. Uh, when you're stressed out, when you're worried, when you're thinking about lack, you can't think about abundance and you have to change your mindset. You have to tell yourself that every day I'm mm -hmm. living in abundance, even though you don't see it, uh, you will see it. You shouldn't be saying, I can't afford that. You need to be saying, I can't afford that and I'm going to have that so that your mind starts changing to absolutely any foundational a uh, thing that you've been taught or seen growing up, that can change. And you can get a brighter future just by the way you're thinking about it and then moving. You have to take steps. You have to move forward. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And there's an interesting article I just read about Fisher Investments. It's a huge uh, financial advising company. They have $114 billion assets under management. And it was interviewing the founder and he was saying why he spends so much money on marketing and advertising. And it was a really amazing mindset that ties into this because he was saying how with $114 billion, not million, but billion dollars, um, assets under management, he was like, we don't have money. In the grand scheme of this industry, financial advising, he's like, we don't even have one tenth of 1% of market share. So in the grand scheme of things, we don't have any money. And when he said that, I'm like, $114 billion? Um, and he's saying it in a more positive way that, yeah, we can keep growing. Like $114 billion assets under management, that's not market share. Because I have people tell me, again, going back to my point, oh, I wish I would have started the YouTube channel 10 years ago. It's so saturated in my idea or my space. Or e-commerce is dead. Amazon has so much competition. And I'm like, Amazon's a $1.4 trillion market. YouTube is a trillion dollar market. 
So why can't anybody watching this have a seven figure business on either platform? There's no logical reason why it's all self coaching in a negative way. We self coach ourselves reasons why we're not successful. Again, it's usually, Oh, if only I did it earlier, there's too much competition now. Um, but again, if you have a seven figure business in a trillion dollar industry, you have no market share in the grand scheme of things. That's not money going back to that article I mentioned. So that's a huge mind sh mindset shift where it's like, wow, seven figures is still not market share. Um, and it makes it possible for people. So are you coaching me right now? Because seven figures, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like seven figure. Yeah, I get it. And that's what I'm saying is mm -hmm. that, you know, the sky's the limit. Mm -hmm. uh, as long as you are being responsible and you are taking care of what you need to be taking care of on this earth, uh, letting God take care of what you cannot take care of, then the sky's the limit. I mean, it literally is. And I am so thankful, even though it took me 52 years, I'm not mad. I'm it not happened, mad. At least, yeah. I'm not mad because mm. guess what? I've got three daughters that are going to benefit from what they're watching and what they can do in their own lives. And like I said, we all have had jobs. I mean, and jobs are a great thing. Don't get me wrong, but you need to, if you have something on the inside of you, like I did with just showing people how to get out of debt and how easy it can be. Oh, I mean, I ran into three today, had three today that were paycheck to paycheck, but they weren't paycheck to paycheck. They just mm. thought they were. And we just tweaked their finances just a little bit. And they have cash flow galore going to be out of debt within a year after they thought they were looking at 30 years. Mm. There's just so much positivity going on right now. I'm so thankful. People don't know how thankful I am that the good Lord allowed me a way to get this out to help people find that freedom so that they can enjoy their lives, enjoy their children, get their marriages back on track. Uh, so many great things are coming out of this and I get the comments. I hear them every day. I'm like getting emails every day. I've been getting them this morning about how people are out of debt, how mm -hmm. they've already got a strategy in line. They're going to be out of debt in four to eight months. That's what I'm saying. That makes me know that I am right to where God called me to be at this minute. And I know that Alex is right where he was called to be because of the way he has helped move me into greater heights with what we've been working on here. And it's not over. I plan on moving into more just because I want to reach more people because I know, mm -hmm. you know, 119,000 that I'm at right now, uh, YouTube subscribers. And by the way, if you want to see that, <laughs> that was a shocker. I didn't even know we got those. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, 119,000 people out of the billions in the world, but the millions right here in the United States of America that are suffering. Hundreds, like, if you really think about it, hundreds of millions of people that need what you do. Right. And mm -hmm. there's only 5% of retired people in America that are financially secure. That is so sad. You mentioned five, not 50. Five. Five, five out of 100 people. That's so sad. And I get those calls and you're talking about, I've had 80 year olds calling me that cannot make their bills. And that's not fair because they worked for 50 years. You know, they're not able to work anymore, maybe. And it, it that is, now I have that vision on my vision board is that the Lord will show me ways to help the elderly to get them in a place to where they're at peace and they're not thinking about money every day until they die. I mean, that's just sad. So if I have a, a new a new goal, that's it, because I am just getting these calls with the elderly that are retired. They're not able to go back to work. There's just so many uh, people that need help and we just need to be looking for people and whatever it is that anyone watching today may have on the inside of them that they know people need, for goodness sake, get out there and, mm -hmm. and push that and let's get the people the help that they need. Exactly, and I'll add one last note on my end that I know we're going to get comments from people that are saying, Oh, they're talking about so much money, seven figures and 500,000 a year. Wow. They're so greedy. And I understand the perspective. I really do. But again, going back to my point from earlier in this conversation, money is power, but it doesn't have to be negative power. It doesn't have to be again, negative, negative, negative. It can be positive power to again, like you did quit your job so you can make more videos to impact more people. Now you're at 120,000 subscribers. I can easily see you at a million subscribers. Um, 
maybe is it in the next year? Maybe not. Is it in 10 years? Most likely, right? And so you're going to impact a lot of people, get hundreds of millions of views. And, but again, removing you from it, it's not about how much money you're making. It's about the impact that you're having. So again, we're not talking about seven figures and like the ignorance debt that I mentioned, the million dollar, like if you make a hundred thousand, your debt is $900,000 a year that you're paying for not knowing how to make a million dollars. And so we all have that ignorance debt in some capacity, but again, it's not some greedy things. So we can buy Lamborghinis and buy Ferraris and that sort of thing. It's just about how can I make more money so I can remove myself from finances and not having to worry about my monthly bills. If I can have more than enough money, I can be generous with my church, mission, family, etc. That's the mindset shift. Again, we're not talking about all this money so you can go on some fancy vacation. It's all about making more money to help more people in whatever way, whether it's with money or with your time and resources. And the point that I want to make is when you make more money, you give more money. Mm -hmm. uh, you give your time, you give your money. And that money is a big deal, even though God doesn't need your money, whether it be any form of donation, like I give to schools, I definitely give to my church. I have mm -hmm. giveaways on YouTube. I have the best time with giveaways on YouTube. <laughs> we laugh for two and three hours on mm -hmm. YouTube. If I have 600 people watching, we are laughing and having a good time because I'm giving away stuff mm -hmm. and I want to continue to do that. And I think that everybody needs to take your mind off of the stress of money. And let's see, what good can we do with $10? You don't have to have $1,000 to do good. Uh, it's, it's just a mindset uh, we need to change. And once that's changed, like I said, the sky's the limit. I think that it's beautiful um, to give to people. That makes me very happy. That's like a thing on the inside of me is to just see somebody find peace, you know, and I thank God I get to see that every day now because I just hear it in your voice when I talk to you. I hear it in uh, the emails that I get, uh, people finding relief, and that's just joy to me. I don't care if I make one dime. That is mm -hmm. joy to hear people finding peace, being able to breathe again. So I want everyone to breathe. <laughs> I really do, because I know what that feels like when you're mm. so uptight and you're so wound up that you're you literally can't even think about anything. But, mm. you know, getting up, getting ready, taking the kids to school, uh, going to work, working a hard day, coming home and doing it all again. Mm. I, I just I don't agree with that. I don't think we were put down here to live that mundane life. I think that we're all spectacular. Uh, if you read in the Old Testament, even everybody was filthy rich. I mean, filthy rich. That was God's people. And it's like, he doesn't want any different for us today. I know that we have a poverty mentality that sometimes the church will throw us into thinking, well, you got to, you know, you got to stay poor because God wants you there. I, I don't agree with that. I've never agreed with that. Mm -hmm. I think God wants us to be abundant so that he can trust us that we're going to take and do with that money what he's put us down here to do with it. I think as long as you're in line with that, you've got it. I mean, you just take it and run because it, it is meant for you to live a life that you are productive. And I think that's beautiful. I, it took me a long time to see that. I was probably in my thirties before that hit me that, wait a minute, we're not supposed to be uh, moaning and groaning and complaining. We're supposed to be living in abundance. So it's not about Lamborghinis. It's mm. not about, you know, when we were in Miami, I saw I saw a Rolls Royce. I had never seen that in my life in person. And I was like, oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Bentleys. And uh, it was beautiful that people have that much money, I guess. But it's not about that. It's about your quality of life and how are you giving to other people. And, Alex, I just want to say before we leave, you have been a prime example of what I want to be in my life. And you're so young. And I just love that. I can't wait till both of my daughters, all three of them, you've, you've met two, mm -hmm. uh, you get to meet the third one hopefully soon. I can't wait for them to be around you and feel your spirit because they're your age. And it's like, they're very successful, but your mindset of your helping and wanting to grow, wanting people to grow, that's beautiful. And I think that that is what we need to live each and every day is that we're encouragers because there are so many discouragers in your family, Mm -hmm. in your friends, uh, th the people out on the road, everybody's so negative. Mm -hmm. And wow, I just want to be a ray of sunshine to people, letting them know that 
there are people that care that you're struggling and we want to pick you up. If we can, we want to help you move forward. Mm -hmm. If anybody's watching and your mom, your dad, your sister, your brother, whoever, they're detracting you, tell them to give me a call, tell them to email me. And I'll be like, Hey, so what do you, because a lot of people think, Oh, I want to start this business. Let me ask my cousin who's never had a YouTube channel before. Let me ask his opinion. And it's like, no offense to your cousin whatsoever, but why are you asking him where to go to get to this destination? Because he hasn't even gone there. He hasn't even started on the journey, right? And so anybody watching your family can easily be your biggest haters. I don't love to use the word haters. We all have haters, I guess nowadays, but your biggest haters, your biggest naysayers will be in your family because they want to keep you down where they are, right? They want to keep you where they control you. They can tell you what to do. They can keep you in this little box. But if you want to grow, they're like, whoa, whoa, Johnny's, he's starting this YouTube channel. He's starting this business. Like, no, no, no. Let me tell him to come back and get in his comfort zone. But I'm telling you, you don't have to work with me. You don't have to work with Christy. You can do it. The information's out there for free. Of course, if you want to take it to the next level, you know, coaching would make sense, but you don't have to do that. And again, if you have somebody that's naysaying you, have them email me. <laughs> I'd be willing to take the time to talk to them and say, so what's your credentials? What's your background to be telling your son, your daughter, whoever, even your husband that he can't do this or she can't do this? I mean, I'd be happy to help anybody watching this. And again, even if it doesn't get to that, I know you can do it. Christy knows you can do it. So don't listen to anybody else. Listen to us because if you're watching this, you're probably looking at us as, okay, I can get to where they are one day. And so if we can do it, you can do it. Yeah, and I had the same thing starting this channel. Uh, I'm not trying to throw people under the bus, but I literally had a comment one day that said, why would you want to help people? Mm. Can you believe somebody would say that out loud? Believe somebody that's close to you. Mm -hmm. uh, I just took a step back that day and I thought, why wouldn't you want to help people? Is that not what the Christian love is supposed to be about? Mm -hmm. So that happens and it happens a lot. And there is a lot of negative people around you. I know because I've been there and they don't want you, just like Alex said, they don't want you to succeed because they want to keep you right where you're supposed to be in their mind. Uh, we have to, even that fear, that, that struggle of, uh, I don't want to mess up that relationship. Uh, you've got to live for you because guess what? You're the only one that's going to stand before God. It's going mm -hmm. to be you and him. It's not going to be your mother, your father, whoever it is, your naysayer is. It's going to be you and you're going to answer for what you did. So it's like, take that responsibility and do the best you can with it and watch how you'll excel. It'll be beautiful. And mm -hmm. I know it. And I'm, I'm so excited for everyone that watches this video, uh, <laughs> that watches my channel. I want to do more encouraging videos. And when I do, I have so many people, they will write and they'll say, I needed that. I needed to hear that. Well, you need to hear that you are your own person and you can make it happen. You can make it happen. You can keep digging. Uh, you can get bigger shovels as you dig more. It's a beautiful thing that when you've been given opportunity and you jump on it, how great that just leads to another opportunity. So very excited that Alex was on today. I just love you, Alex. I just, I love your fiance. I just think <laughs> you two are awesome. Uh, I just, I can't say enough good things about Alex and his work. So if you are interested in starting any kind of business, if you already have just a little idea that you've been thinking about for years, just talk to him. He'll talk to you about it and he'll tell you if it's realistic or not, or if he can help push you in that. Uh, don't think anything is stupid. Just talk to him and give him a chance to see if he can encourage you. Um, now I have seen some of my clients go to Alex and he'll literally tell them uh, you're not ready for that yet, or, you know, give this a few more months. Mm -hmm. So he's realistic about what he can do and what he thinks you can do. So we're not out. I'm not upselling. He's not upselling. Mm -hmm. I've told you all before, I don't even care if you ever, ever purchased a service from me. I want you to do your finances. I have the videos out there. They are free. Watch them, learn, and go do it. I did. You can too. 
but with Alex, uh, he doesn't upsell. I have never once had him discuss money with me after the initial sale of where I just got him on board. Like I said, he's done so much more than I ever thought that I had paid him for. And I am just so thankful. I'm thankful to you, Alex, because I really think you have shown me a person on this earth in life that is exactly what you would love all people to be just be real you know just offer uh, what you can do be real about what you can do and then supportive and i mean you're just everything i appreciate you so much i love you too and thank you for those kind words and as you mentioned it's all just a conversation i mean as you mentioned i tell people sometimes more often than not you want to do this, but maybe if you wait three months, you work with Christy, you get your finances in a better place, you join. It's all just, again, if you go to the link in the description, we can have a conversation. There's no pressure. You can leave your credit card at home. Like I'm not trying to, like you said, sign up people and then upsell them. It's more about if I can truly help you, we can have a conversation and figure out what the next steps are. And even if not, I'll try to give you some you know, advice, consulting, some free resources to help you um, because that's all I'm here to do. I totally believe that. And like I said, I appreciate you. I thank you so much for coming on today. I, I want to I want to have you on here every day, but I know that's not possible. <laughs> like, can you just move into my house or better yet, I'll move into yours? Come to Miami. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I can't wait to see you again. It's not mm -hmm. going to be long. I'm so excited about that. So uh, just know that you have my support and I want people to see that because I don't refer many people. There's very few people that, you know, I just don't because I need to know. I need to know who you are before I'm sending people that I care about to you. And I send everybody to you that needs that to push because I know that you can give it and I'm excited for them to meet you. So uh, if you're out there and you, you have a dream, I am talking to the dream maker right here and he can help you. So I hope that you'll give him an opportunity for at least a conversation. Uh, but I hope above all that you guys find the peace that you're looking for, whatever mm -hmm. that means. I just want everybody to find peace, uh, to enjoy your life while you've got it. YOLO, right? We only <laughs> live once and you need to, you need to step out and enjoy that life. And I, I don't, I don't like to see people discouraged. So mm -hmm. please reach out to me if you need anything. I'll be glad to refer you to Alex if you want to come through my email or ask me questions, comments. I have his link underneath my videos. Uh, please go there and just see what you can learn. It may amaze you what he's able to do and how he can push you in your dream. That's all we want for you. So thank you guys for joining me today. Thank you for Alex being on here. Like I said, you are welcome back anytime. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video.